Alright guys, it's Trybox Reviews, coming at you guys with The Deuce, Season 1, Episode 5, Review. So, I really enjoyed this episode, uh, to be honest. Um, yeah, I just feel like this show is really, you know, picking up the pace, you know, a little bit each episode. Um, and yeah, I know, you know, not a lot, right? <laughs> not a lot. It is still going a lot, uh, you know, pretty slow compared to some other shows especially. But really great character development and uh, just, you know, just really, you know, still impressing me week to week this show. And honestly, you know, like I still find myself excited, you know, every every week to watch the show on Sunday night. Um, so yeah, so I, I really, uh, enjoy it. It's doing, you know, it basically is checking off all the boxes I wanted it to. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so yeah, this episode was good. Um, I don't think I enjoyed it as much as last week's episode. Um, but yeah, I did notice that, you know, we're kind of slowly progressing here and getting a little bit more, um, you know, in each episode here, you know, kind of, um, scaling up the, the pace, like a little bit each time, right? Um, and we're, tr you know, starting to get into actually, like, important things with the plot. Um, we had a big thing this episode, uh, of course, right, with Bobby and Vincent and all that. So I'll get to that, of course. Um, but yeah, so some good, uh, some good positives here. And, uh, yeah, for those, uh, you know, for those viewers that, you know, aren't a big fan of the slow, you know, slow-moving sort of character development, I think that's what this whole season is going to be, and maybe even season two, you know, possibly. And, you know, they have already been, you know, renewed for a season two for sure. So I think some of those fans may be disappointed with the show. Um, and I am a little disappointed in that regard. But I think everything else is, you know, kind of evens that out, right? And it's just, you know, I find it really enjoyable still. Um, and, yeah, I honestly do feel like I'm watching, like, mini movies each week. Um, and, you know, I'm not sure if that's a... I guess it's a good thing, right? Um, just because the, the quality of it is just so amazing. Um, the length is like, so it's literally like they say an hour, like it's literally like 59 minutes and like 40 seconds or something like that. So they're not kidding when they say an hour, but yeah, um, I don't know. I, I'm not a huge fan. Of that. I think it's a little bit long. Um, but again, I'm not really used to those sort of, uh, shows, right. That are an hour long. Um, so yeah, I guess, I guess that's just me, but anyways, uh, yeah, I'll get into a quick recap then of the episode here. And then, you know, end off my thoughts, my rating, favorite character, you know, stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. So, again, just like apologize for this one being a little late Tuesday. Um, now, I, this will probably be my normal day for uploading the Deuce reviews because, uh, well, not yet. But The Walking Dead is going to be coming back in two weeks. And I will be doing those reviews on Monday, the day after. Um, just because that's, you know, obviously a bigger profile, you know, show. Um, that a lot of people, you know, tune into. So, yeah, this one's going to be bumped to Tuesday. Um, so, technically, this will be my normal slot. But until Walking Dead starts, I'm going to try to keep this on Mondays. So, yeah, that's just uh, that's just how that goes. Um, so, then also I can do the Brave, right, on, um, on um, Tuesday as well. All right, so, start off this episode. Uh, Frankie is trying to talk Vincent into accepting the offer from Rudy. And we saw that last episode. Uh, you know, about how he's offering him, you know, that new building area, or the space. Um, you know, Vince is very hesitant about it. Uh, you know, he doesn't really want to run the girls. Uh, he feels bad for them. You know, he, he says that, you know, he doesn't really uh, like the whole, like, pimp and the whole, you know, prostitute industry. And, you know, he kind of takes their business at the bar, of course. But he just, you know, really has experienced a lot of it, too, right, with owning the bar. So he just really isn't, you know, about that. He doesn't want to get involved with that. Um, but then, uh, you know, later on, uh, Rudy's assistant uh, comes into the bar. I'm still not sure his name, by the way. I got to get his name. Um, but yeah, it's Rudy's assistant. I'm just going to say for now, I guess, right-hand man, something like that. And basically, he comes to the bar um, to kind of follow up with him, ask him, you know, for his decision. And Vincent tells him no. So, you know, <laughs> uh, Vincent has the balls to tell him no. And, uh, and like he even says, he said, you know, like, am I allowed to say no or something? Because Rudy's assistant kind of, you know, reacts a little shocked about it. Um, and I don't know, I got the impression that he can't really say no to Rudy at this point, right? I think he's in too deep already with these guys. And once you're in, you know, you can't really get out. Um, and I think Bobby said that perfectly in this episode. I think he said, you know, like once you get involved with them, you're you're in for the long run or whatever. So 
Um, and I think that's so true. I don't think, I think Vincent says no here. Yeah, later on, you know, of course, we, we know that he does say yes. Um, but if he kept his answer no, I don't know. I don't know if they would have let him do that, to be honest. I feel like he was getting this place if he wanted it or not. Um, so, anyways, uh, just, you know, getting involved with the wrong people here. And uh, now he's, you know, just, it's a snowball effect, really, right? Um, so, that, yeah, that was sort of the first part. And, of course, you know, we have a lot of follow-up with that uh, plot as well. Uh, so then Darlene uh, uses Abby's... And I haven't talked about Darlene much, just because I haven't really seen her as a, you know, pivotal story point. But now that she's, you know, kind of touching into Abby's storyline a little bit and her kind of progression, now I think, you know, she's becoming a more relevant character. She does get quite a lot of screen time, though, I will admit. Her and uh, Larry, um, those scenes, so for sure. Um, I do think that she's definitely relevant. Uh, so basically she uses Abby's, uh, train ticket that she bought her last episode and she goes back to Charlotte with it. You know, that, that, that was the plan. Uh, but what Abby doesn't know and what we don't know is that she actually promises Larry that she will bring a girl back for him. You know, that's kind of the point of her going there. So she actually tells Larry, you know, that she's going. Uh, so she ends up getting this waitress of the restaurant to come back with her. Uh, her name's Bernice, and uh, for any of those fans out there, uh, I don't know if there is any, but, um, you know, that are watching this video, but power fans, you know this girl, uh, she's just been in the recent season, uh, season four, the last few episodes, um, yeah, and she plays like a six, 16 or 17 year old in that, and I just found out that she's, I think, 27, the actual actor, and she, she, like, or I think she's like almost 30, and she looks like, honestly, a 16 year old, so... Um, yeah, she's a really great actor. She was great in power. Um, and that's, yeah, every time I looked at her, I just saw that. I, I really couldn't see her in, like, those times. But, anyways, that's just what happens, right, when you watch too many TV shows, uh, of the same, like, type of genre. But, anyways, her name's Bernice. Uh, and so, you know, she comes back with her on the train, or the bus, I guess, and, uh, Larry sees her, and, uh, he thinks she's too young, um, uh, and doesn't actually want her. You know, he, he thinks that, uh, she, she's under 16 or something like that, or she is 16, um, and, you know, that she just looks way too young for any man that, you know, would want to pick her up, or, or, you know, that, that, you know, so she wouldn't be able to make a living for him, um, and basically, this was, like, some of the funniest stuff of the episode, but it's also kind of sad, too, right, um, but just the interaction between Larry and Rodney was funny, um, but the actual, you know, whole thing of, you know, selling people is, uh, is kind of terrible, but basically he offers her to Rodney for a price, uh, and I think it was like 2500 or something dollars for this girl, so, yeah, like, that part is sad, but, you know, the, the scene with Rodney and Larry is just, like, these pimps interacting with each other is, you know, really funny, funny part of the show, um, and we all, you know, are kind of starting to hate them already, right, they're kind of the antagonists so far, um, and, I still find, I still find the, 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 uh, you know, the interactions funny, uh, so basically, Rodney ends up accepting the offer after he sees Bernice, um, and, yeah, so she now works for him, you know, he, he pays Larry, and, uh, yeah, so she's another prostitute for him, and, yeah, I don't know, I really feel sorry for this girl, obviously, you know, she, she's from Charlotte, you know, she's, she's, uh, pretty young, she's 20, I guess, in the show, um, and, uh, yeah, she's, you know, she's a young girl, she has a, a future, and, uh, now she's gonna be working for Rodney, uh, and being a prostitute, so, and, you know, she looks so innocent as well, right, so, I don't know, I, I do feel sorry for her, um, but, I mean, Larry said she, you know, that he didn't want her to get back, for her to get back on the bus and go home, and she didn't want to, um, so, yeah, I guess it's kind of, like, partly her decision, right, she could have gone back if she wanted to, um, but, yeah, so kind of a uh, kind of a little bit sad there, but uh, we'll have to see what happens with that character. Why they introduced her, of course, right? So I like the way that they used Darlene to introduce her, sort of, um, and then they also kind of used that Abby storyline as well and kind of touched on that with it. So I felt that like, that was a great way to bring in that character. I feel like we're gonna see definitely more of Bernice in the next couple episodes. Um, I looked on IMDb, and uh, it says that she, the actor, is actually in the next four episodes. Or, no, sorry, the next three episodes, so, you know, we're definitely going to see a lot of her, uh, so Candy, so this was a great spotlight episode for Candy, uh, the first thing I have here is that she gets together with Jack again, 
um, it was kind of an awkward scene between them. You know, I didn't really, didn't really, you know, kind of understand all of it. But basically, you know, they're having sex at his place. And, you know, he's kind of amazed by her, right? Because obviously he doesn't know that, you know, she, you know, basically has sex for a living, right? Or, or you know, she, she uh, you know, gets blowjobs or whatever, right, uh, as her job. So, you know, he doesn't know that yet. And uh, so obviously he's, you know, pretty pleased by her. Um, and yeah, so they're, they're at his house, of course, right? You know, she still wants to hide where she really lives. Um, and yeah, she's really not being honest with him at all. Um, and yeah, I mean, Jack seems like a really genuine guy. And I feel sorry for him because, you know, he's kind of being led on by, by Candy here, or Eileen. And I think, you know, honestly, I think he's a good guy for Candy, right? I think, you know, I'm just going to say Candy because it'll get mixed up with two names. But anyway, so Candy, I think he'd be a good guy for her. I think he's a really nice guy, you know, really genuine. He he actually cares about her, um, which is, you know, you can't really say that for any of the other men that Candy sleeps with. So, um, yeah, definitely. I just think that she's, you know, not ready for this relationship. Like, she's kind of toying with him, you know, just for the self-enjoyment. Um, and I do feel bad for him because I feel like he's legitimately, you know, he cares about her and, um, and, you know, he's kind of getting attached now and, you know, it's basically based all on lies. So another thing though is, you know, why would he not look into it more? That is kind of his fault as well, right? Like, why would he not ask her questions? Like keep asking about personal things, but anyways, uh, that is what that is there. Um, and these aren't in chronological order. This is just sort of, you know, points of what happened here. Uh, so then on to the next one, uh, Bobby tells Vincent that the doctors uh, are going to give him a year uh, before he would have another stroke if he went back to the construction job. So, uh, yeah, so he's got one year until he has another stroke, and he will most likely die from this stroke um, if he goes back to, to work uh, on the construction job. So um, basically he needs something else. Obviously, you know, they don't have enough money to retire or anything. Um, so he's got to have some way of making money. So he offers to run the business. So, I mean, we still don't know exactly what it is yet, but I, I'm going to call it like a strip club or in the episode, they even called it a whorehouse. Um, you know, believe me, I'm not calling it that, but that's what they said in the episode. So, um, yeah, the whorehouse, I guess I'll refer to it as, um, it just seems kind of like derogatory, but anyways, um, yeah, or the strip club, whatever. So he, he tells Vincent that he wants to run this business so that he can make money and that, you know, that, that'll be his job. Um, and yeah, so basically, and then he also said, you know, he'll do all the construction and set it all up. So yeah, you know, why, why not take the deal if you're Vincent, right? Um, but obviously, you know, Bobby was definitely against it just even in the beginning of the episode. And now all of a sudden middle up, uh, you know, towards the end of the episode, you know, he's all for it, and now he's going to be the boss, so, um, definitely a change of heart, but it's what he, you know, it's kind of what he had to do, um, and it also, I, I like that it showed the scene where he kind of, you know, came to the realization, and, you know, kind of was forced into thinking like that, uh, so then Vincent gets the approval from Rudy, and Bobby is put in charge of this new place, uh, so basically Vincent's, you know, gonna own it, right, and, uh, and, you know, look after the business side, um, and, uh, basically Bobby's going to be in charge and, and basically run the place. So, um, yeah, seems like a good deal, right? And they're, you know, brother-in-laws, so I don't see, you know, how it really couldn't work. Um, and then we see by the end of the episode that Bobby's actually started construction on it. And yeah, he says he'll have the place up and running within the month. And, uh, now they just need girls. So yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be very interesting where that takes us. The first like big plot or big storyline in this show so far is this. So I think it's going to be uh, pretty entertaining. I hope they focus quite a bit on it. Like we get a lot of time. Um, but we'll have to see. And for Vincent, like what a great opportunity, right? Like, I mean, he has the bar and now he can keep working at the bar because Bobby's going to take over this. So, you know, now like, what, you know, how is how does it get any better than that, right? Two places of income and uh, both are going to be doing pretty well, I would think. So, um, yeah, basically, uh, that, that's that thing there. Bobby takes over and, uh, I think it'll be, I think it'll be ready next, next episode, I would think, because they are skipping quite a bit, you know, it's quite a bit of time in between episodes here. So, um, I would think that it would be done by next week or the week after, but for sure season one, it'll be done and probably open. So we'll get to see that. 
Uh, so then Abby's storyline this week, um, I don't know, it was, it was kind of weird, um, I didn't know where it really came from, uh, but basically she, you know, kind of just gets, starting to get mad at the pimps and the prostitutes kind of in general, um, you know, and kind of, you know, a little resentful of them, I guess, um, and I'm not really sure why, right, like, I don't, I don't really, you know, it, it wasn't really provided, I don't know, maybe I'm missing something, but it just kind of seemed mysterious to me, you know, why, why she would, you know, suddenly do this, although, you know, they did build it up a little bit, right, that she, you know, was smarter than people, and, you know, she could tell things, um, but it never really set up, you know, her hatred, right, I don't know, uh, but basically, she takes pictures of this Reggie Love guy who's a pimp, um, and they get, you know, she gets in a fight with him, you know, not physical, of course, but, you know, verbal fight with him, and, you know, then she later uh, finds out that Darlene used the ticket she brought her, um, you know, to go, and then she came back. Like, she didn't even go to stay and get away from Larry. Um, so, I totally understand that, you know, Abby would be upset about that. You know, definitely, she wasted, basically, she wasted money for Darlene to go there and literally pick up a girl and bring her back. Like, so I get that as to why I, that would make Abby angry, but that whole thing with Reggie Love took place before that. So, I don't know, I, I don't know if I'm missing something, or it's just a little confusing, maybe I have to look more into it, or look less into it, I don't know, um, but yeah, just kind of a confusing there, um, and, uh, yeah, she just doesn't really understand the business, um, Abby, and, uh, and, you know, she's one of the only ones that, that talks about, about it, really, right, and, you know, says it's wrong, and, you know, she, she's against it, right, everyone, is kind of against it, but they, they don't say anything, right, like, they just kind of, you know, go on with their day, and, you know, they know what's happening, but what are they going to do about it, so, and she's one of the only ones that talks out about it, and actually, you know, kind of gets in a fight with some of these guys, so, yeah, I mean, definitely a, a good thing there, um, and also, then later on, she comes to work without wearing that leotard that all the waitresses have to wear now, um, and yeah, so, I don't know, it's just, like, rebellious behavior, maybe, I'm not exactly sure what caused it, um, and, uh, and we'll have to see, I don't know, maybe they're, maybe they're gonna explain that next episode a little bit better, um, but yeah, that's, that's my two cents, uh, for that one. So then, uh, we get, uh, Paul, uh, so he's, you know, the, the gay bartender, uh, basically that works for, uh, Vincent now, or I guess, he, like, he, you know, he did work there before, I'm not sure if he owned it, I don't think he owned it, he was just a worker there, um, <clears throat> but basically, he goes to this, uh, the movie theater, um, and it seems like back then, it was just, like, pornos that were playing in the movie theater, um, <clears throat> but basically, you know, he goes, and he's watching, you know, this gay porno, um, and, uh, well, I guess back then, it wasn't called a porno, right, I guess it was a film, um, <laughs> but basically, a man comes over, uh, and offers him, offers to give him a blowjob, um, and, uh, so yeah, that was kind of weird, and then, all of a sudden, the cops arrest him, for soliciting, they say, and he, and he gets brought in, uh, to the, to the station, so, I don't know, I didn't really understand this whole part, um, maybe, like, I guess soliciting, you know, soliciting gay, uh, material or something was illegal back then, I don't know, I didn't really understand the whole charge, um, or maybe, like, just the cops were corrupt and they didn't like gays, or I'm not exactly sure what happened, um, and we also see the guy later in the jail cell, uh, who, you know, gave him the blowjob, so, he wasn't an undercover cop or anything, so I don't know exactly how the cops caught him, how that all went down, yeah, I was kind of confused about that, um, again, may just be me, I don't know, uh, but yeah, so Vincent, uh, then, you know, he gets the news about Paul, um, and yeah, Vincent, you know, he's been making, you know, some, some, uh, you know, bad jokes about Paul, you know, and, and saying all these things, but honestly, I think he, I think he does respect him, and I think he treats him uh, as an equal, right, and, uh, which a lot of people back then didn't, right, um, you know, they didn't really support gays at all, so, uh, yeah, I think that's a, another quality for Vincent, right, you know, Ray, when he hears the news of Paul there, you know, he, he's a friend to him, right, and he sends Big Mike right away, to bail him out, um, and yeah, and Big Mike, <laughs> Big Mike creates a little scene at the station, that was great, I really liked that, um, you know, and insults the officers, and, you know, <laughs> uh, as he actually bails him out, so, I thought that was kind of funny, right, he's kind of standing up for Paul, and, you know, great again, right, you know, stand up for him, and, uh, and, you know, he says a few things to the cops, so that was a good scene, um, and yeah, I like the approach, though, that the show is taking as well, it's sort of the, the issues of the times, uh, you know, with, with gays, you know, and, and, you know, gay rights and all that, I'm, I'm sure, 
Um, and obviously, you know, I think that was a big issue back then. And for them to, you know, that work in a character like Paul. And he got a lot of screen time in this episode. Like, I mean, quite a lot. I would say maybe a good 10 minutes at least that he was, he had screen time. So, uh, this was kind of a, a, a bigger episode for him. And, uh, yeah, to, to put a character like Paul in the show and, uh, really give him some time to develop and, and flourish here, um, is really great. And it, it just shows, you know, dedication of these, uh, you know, creators, David Simon. I honestly, I would try to pronounce the other guy's name, but I don't think I can. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so anyways, they're doing a great job for that. Um, so then this was kind of, <clears throat> you know, the, the, uh, the end of the episode here, the, the general ending here. Um, and this was kind of the big parts of the episode. So, um, Candy is basically having sex with a client or, you know, I guess not yet, right? She's kind of in the room and he's there. Um, and, you know, we kind of sensed that something was up because this guy was kind of just standing there and watching her. Um, and, you know, we started to think, you know, something might be happening here. And all of a sudden, you know, he slaps her um, and demands her money from him or from her, right? Um, that she's made that night. And, you know, obviously he's an absolute dick, right, to do this, uh, you know, to do something like this uh, with, with, uh, with, the, with the girl. Um, and, of course, this brings up the whole issue of her not having a pimp, right? So that's, that's what that is. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, in my next thing as well. But uh, basically she's able to pepper spray him, but she can't get out of the room in time because the door is locked and she can't get out. And, you know, this is just a really tough scene to watch. Um, and, you know, I'm really glad that they didn't show it. We just kind of heard it. But even the sound of it was just, you know, kind of, you know, I don't know. It was it was hard to watch. Kind of gave you the chills a little bit. Um, but basically, she gets beat up by the guy and uh, and robbed by him. So she he takes her money. And, uh, yeah, so just really, you know, sad because, you know, we, we, you know, are starting to feel for Candy right now in this situation, even though, you know, she is a prostitute and, you know, she's kind of the low of the lows, right, in, in New York. But we do feel for her uh, because, of, you know, this amazing character development so far. And, and uh, yeah, so that's why it was such a hard scene to watch or hear, I guess. Um, and, yeah, so then she's in the hospital being treated for her injuries and yeah, she doesn't look good, right? Her face is bruised and cut pretty bad. So yeah, just a really emotional part of the episode here um, that, you know, a guy could do this to her. Just really, just really sad. Um, but, she, you know, we see that she's so determined that she puts cover up on and she goes right back out to the streets, you know, the, the next night and uh, she's back at it, you know, which is incredible, right? For her to, you know, get back up on the horse and, uh, and you know, I guess go back out. So um, yeah, I mean, kind of fearless, right, that she's, you know, willing to do that after that happened to her, um, so yeah, that was kind of that, um, and then one of my favorite parts of the episode, um, was this part, so basically Candy's exchange with Rodney, um, so to me, this is probably one of the best scenes of the episode, um, <clears throat> I thought it was amazing, I mean, uh, you know, first of all, so, so this is after she got injured, of course, that night, so Ronnie kind of comes up to her after he sees that she's, you know, been beaten, and, uh, you know, basically tries to, his old thing about, you know, he wants to be her pimp, so, you know, she stands up to him at first, she even embarrasses him in front of, you know, his own girls, um, you know, saying, you know, get back in that, uh, I forget what it was, um, get back in that pimp mobile or something like that and drive away, something like that, that line, and that was really great, um, you know, that line kind of embarrasses him, and, you know, she's very emotional about it as well, right, she's kind of, you know, I'm not sure if it was kind of laughing or crying at that point, I think it was like a little bit of both, um, she was kind of like trying to laugh it off or something and hide it, but, yeah, so we see Rodney, you know, he's very harsh with her, insults her about her childhood, and I don't know where this guy gets off, really. I mean, he's trying to be her pimp and get on her good side so that she'll work with him. And then he's just, you know, being so rude to her and insulting her. So I don't know where he's trying to get. But, uh, yeah, she basically wins the argument, I would say. Um, and basically he walks away. And, uh, yeah, I thought it was a great, you know, powerful scene by her, honestly. I thought, you know, that, that whole comfort confrontation was really great, really well done. The acting in that was amazing. The, the guy who plays Rodney, like, wow. I mean, you know, and, and Maggie Jono, of course, you know, both of them were really good in that scene. So, yeah, one of my favorites and uh, very good, you know, powerful scene by her. You don't see these girls standing up to these pimps much, right? You know, and if they do, 
they're you know they're probably gonna get you know bad things gonna happen okay um and she stands up to him and and you know she doesn't really give a fuck right she's kind of just you know uh, she's just kind of doing it, so, uh, basically then, you know, after that, we, we kind of see, you know, she's had enough working, you know, with working on the streets, she's, she's kind of done at this point, right, um, and we've seen that in the last couple episodes, that she's getting to this point, um, and yeah, so basically, you know, a guy tries to pull up, and, and she basically ignores him, and keeps walking, so, um, and obviously, she wouldn't do that if, uh, if she wasn't, you know, feeling down, and she didn't want to do it anymore, um, and this was, like, the, I don't know. This is the funniest line of the whole show, to my in my opinion, so far, uh, where she visits the guy from the movie business, and he offers her job actually in two weeks um, to be, you know, in one of his porn films because now the laws are starting to change a little bit, and now he can put films back in the camera, so he'll actually be making these movies and selling them, so that she can, you know, she's going to get this job uh, to be in one of the films in two weeks. So that's kind of her big break now. She's very happy about it, and uh, yeah, this is, I have to say this, so the guy says, you know, there's been a change in the community standards, or something like that to her, and she says, what about community standards, and he says, apparently New York has none, oh, it was great, I don't do it justice at all, I mean, the way he said it, it it's just hilarious, that delivery was great, Um, and yeah, that was probably the best quote, like, ever um in this series so far so anyways i thought that was great and the actor who plays him is is really funny as well and not in that scene so um yeah that was a great great scene as well one of my favorites as well but yeah so she got the job two weeks she'll be in this uh film so finally you know she might she might be able to get off these streets and uh going to the the movie business right <laughs> as as he says so anyways that just about does it for the recap now i'll get to my rating and uh some of my thoughts so for this episode uh, in terms of a rating, I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5. Um, so yeah, I thought it was a good episode, right? Um, not as good as last week's, I think. But uh, yeah, it, Paul, it was centered around Paul quite a bit, to be honest. And it was Candy. I think it was basically Candy's episode, though a lot of the stuff involved her. Um, Abby actually had quite a few parts as well. Vincent, uh, Frankie, and Bobby kind of were toned down this episode. They didn't have much, literally, except for that, really. And like a few bar scenes with Vincent. So, yeah, they toned down them a little bit and kind of brought up Candy and Abby and, and Paul even got a lot more screen time than usual. So, um, yeah, a few things. They're really not holding back on these sex scenes at all. I mean, this Paul guy, you know, he starts, uh, you know, jerking off in the theater. And we like we actually see him, you know, with his, you know, his 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 dick out. Like, I don't know. Uh, some of the stuff is just, like, is it necessary? I don't know. I feel like just because they're on HBO, they're kind of just, like, going crazy with it. And they can do, you know, whatever they want, right? They can have any nudity they want. And, um, yeah, like, we saw Maggie Gyllenhaal. We saw, like, her pubic hair even in this. Like, they're really not holding back at all uh, so far. And, I mean, I get Like, I guess some of it, yeah, I think it is is relevant. But... Some of it, it's like, does that, do we really need to see that? Like, I'm pretty sure that we can imagine what that would look like. Like, like well, Paul, you know, like, why do we need to see that? Like, we know exactly what he's doing with his hand when he's like this, right? So, like, I don't know. I just feel like some of the things are a little unnecessary. Um, but maybe that's me. Maybe some people are <laughs> kind of, like, desensitized to it. They don't really notice it much. But with TV shows, this is the most nudity and, and you know, sexual stuff I've ever seen. Um... And so, yeah, I don't know. I, I think for most people it would be, but I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I also, you know, again, why show so much of Paul this episode? Um, are they maybe building towards something? I even think, you know, a loose prediction right now, I think that he may actually die uh, in episode eight, that he might actually be killed off this show. Uh, yeah, which would be soon, but it would make sense why they're starting to build up his character, give him a little bit more screen time so we get a little bit more attached to him. Um, by the time, you know, he, he kind of bites the dust. I don't know, it's a loose prediction right now, and I'm not exactly sure, you know, why he would die, um, or how he would die, but, yeah, that's just kind of where I'm at with that, right? That's just, uh, you know, what, what I'm kind of thinking right now, but that's really the only reason I thought of, you know, showing more of him this week, or maybe they're just trying to space out the episodes, they needed, you know, more time, I don't know, could be. 
Um, and yeah, great up, great spotlight episode for Candy. I thought, and I really thought it wasn't uh, was her episode this this week, um, which I really enjoyed. And and yeah, just really great acting. Of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that, of course. But um, yeah, she she did really great, Candy, and and the whole character. I mean, like I said at the beginning, we really feel for her. Um, you know, and she kind of stands out, you know, amongst all these women on the street. And uh, and yeah, we really, you know, we really feel sorry for her when. When you know she's she's uh, one of the like I said the lowest of the lows really right in in New York City, um, and yeah we really feel for her uh, with all this character development and this episode was great for that as well it kind of you know the camel uh, the, the camel the straw that uh, broke the camel's back right a little bit right uh, with with the whole you know she's finally done with the streets and now she's you know kind of into this film business so yeah really great build up to that uh, I felt like of course they could have got to it sooner. But that's just kind of the way this show's going, and I'm I'm perfectly fine with it as long as it's consistent. So um, I feel like it's gonna pick up for sure. You know, maybe even at season two, I think um, it, it'll probably pick up and and get going a little bit faster once they you know make a little bit more of an introduction here. Um, favorite character for this one is Candy, obviously, right? Uh, played by Maggie Joan Hall, and uh, and yeah, like I said, I've I've talked about her enough. But basically, I mean, Maggie Joan Hall is doing a great job. Like I said, I mean, she's She's really, you know, done everything. I mean, she's shown with just about everything uh, so far in this show, uh, which I'm surprised at, honestly. Like, I did not think that, you know, I, I get it's HBO, right? So even really the main actors, the, the stars um, in these shows are really going to be bearing all, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, so I don't know about James Franco. We haven't seen, I guess, that much of him uh, yet, but I don't know. We, <laughs> I don't know, because we, we saw Paul this episode, but I guess he's not as big, so I, I don't really know, I don't know where that's gonna go, but anyways, just so I mentioned that, and that's, that's part of acting, right, that she's willing to do that, um, and yeah, she's just doing a great job with it, with the character, really making it believable, and just, like, even in that Rodney scene, like, she's not even talking, you know, she's kind of, like, that laughing and crying thing, and, you know, and just kind of even, like, the look she gives, just really great, right, she doesn't even have to speak, and, and she's really doing a great job, so, Anyways, yeah, that just about wraps up this video for the deuce. Thank you so much for watching uh, the video. Thanks for the recent support on the videos. 5,000 views on the channel now we're at. So, yeah, really, really appreciate it, you know, everyone who's, you know, tuning in. Um, like I always say, if you're new, I mean, I've been doing the deuce ever since the beginning. So, episode 1 to now this to episode 5 are up on the channel. So, please go back and watch those if you uh, have watched since the beginning as well. And, uh, yeah, I think that's just about it. Um, yeah, I think, uh, my other fall lineup shows are up as well. If you watch some of those, Seal Team, The Brave, uh, Walking Dead, obviously, I'm going to be doing in two weeks. So, yeah, anyways, that is just about it. Uh, thank you for watching again, like I said. And I'll see you next week for The Deuce, Season 1, Episode 6. Only three episodes left in Season 1. So let's go. Brothers and the whitest Blacks and the crack